What is going on folks? So, I'm Bob, and welcome to something I haven't done in actually a quite a long time, and I figured I'd probably get back on it, because, well, it's been weighing on my mind, and I figured it's a good time as any, so, eh, fuck it, might as well, right? So, um, what am I doing right now? So, uh, this is, for those, okay, so for those who are newer, I know there's been, uh, actually I haven't done, uh, actual podcast since I did reach 1,000 subscribers, so, Yes, for anyone who doesn't know, uh, for me in the long term, I do run a podcast, and I figured I'd bring it back for something special. Um, this is... So for those who don't know, um, recently Dragon Ball Super has, has started getting dubbed. Uh, actual Funimation dubs, and I figured, you know what? I know way too much about this Godforsaken series, so I might as well do something with this because I want to actually like express my opinions with that with my audience in real time. So I was thinking about it. I wanted to do like some sort of like video review of Super as I was watching it because I'd be really fun and stuff. I was thinking that I'd want to make a review video review for every new episode or new episode I watched. But honestly, that would take forever, and no one wants their sub boxes clogged with all that shit, especially at the rate I watch stuff. So I figured, you know what, uh, I'm going to review the first two new, new, uh, Dragon Ball movies, which is Battle Gods, Resurrection F, and then once I'm done with those two, I'll get started on actually watching Dragon Ball Super properly, because, you know, I'm kind of a guy known for, uh, being a giant fucking Dragon Ball Z fan, so, I know, it's a little weird, I haven't actually started yet, um, I was contemplating watching it subbed, but I was like, nah, screw that. I'd rather actually watch it dubbed because it's what I'm familiar with. I, I would get the most enjoyment out of it. That's why I never watched Battle of Gods until it was out in theaters. Uh, Resurrection F was a worldwide release, but I wanted to watch it like in theaters. And um, yeah, I was holding off on Super for a long time. Is it still like, fuck. <clears throat> Sorry, it's been a long afternoon, guys. Uh, I want to hold off on Super until it was dubbed properly so I could actually watch it and offer input on all that stuff. So, um, here we are, I guess. Yeah, so, my final conclusion was I want to actually do video reviews of Dragon Ball Super as I'm watching it. So I can offer, throw input on it as we go along. I know my, my audience is probably going to know a lot about the show. They've probably already watched it at least twice. Well, not, not everyone, of course. I know probably more people are here long term for Naruto as opposed to DBZ but if you're into the one if you're into one you might as well give the RR shot I can guarantee you there are aspects of both you'll probably like but regardless um you have to go easy on me I don't know shit about Super as I get into it but I'm going to unravel it as we get along so <clears throat> now we can actually do this shit um and one final disclaimer this is not part of my actual podcast series this is gonna be like a side thing Jericho have used Dragon Ball Z bullshit. <laughs> yeah, so this would be interesting. I've actually always wanted to do like some sort of Dragon Ball Z review slash retrospective slash watching all the movies live, but I've never had a means to do that. That would be legal, but you know. Alright. <clears throat> Damn, why is my nose acting up? It should not be doing that. Regardless. So, uh, here we are. What with uh, Dragon Ball Z Battle of Gods. So, if you... um. I actually watched this when it dropped in theaters for the first time. I was watching, I watched it with my bro Josh. Um, God, it's so weird. I've been doing this for like four years now, but Josh has never once been on my channel. Um, dude needs to uh, probably swing by so we can do shit together. But regardless, um, I went to go see it with him, and it was actually the mo I wasn't expecting much. I had no expectations going into it. I was. It was at the dawn of newer. Dragon Ball Z content being released, so I didn't really have any expectations going into it. I didn't know what to think. So, when we get there, I was pleasantly surprised. I actually thought it was really, really good. Um, insanely good, actually. I think... I was discussing this with Brandon the other day. Um, something regarding, like, if Super Android 13 was, like, my second favorite Dragon Ball Z movie. I was like, no? And he was like, oh, what is your second favorite movie? Uh, Cool's Revenge. So what's your first again? Future of Born. Ba basically, more or less. However, after I say that, I said that I would be generous and after rewatching it, I would probably say Battle Gods is like fourth or fifth favorite now. It's actually not it's really good. I um 
I got okay. I got to like organize my thoughts a little bit on this. Hang on a sec. I got some power right over here. I'm also full of Reese's pieces, so that might not be helping me. So, uh, yeah, after I watched it with Josh, I did have full intentions of actually reviewing it as soon as I got home, but, um, I don't know, this was like four fucking years ago. I don't remember what happened. It didn't end up happening. I was probably busy with Naruto at the time because it was 2013? Yeah, probably 2013. I'm looking at the wiki right now. Oh, no, it says 2004. Yeah, I was, I wasn't close to, uh, working by then, but... Uh, it's pretty close. Uh, that was also when school started, probably, so that wasn't too fun. Yeah, I was probably just busy at the time with Naruto content, but, yeah. So, uh, recently, Brandon does own the, uh, Blu-ray releases, and he also has, um, well, he has the Blu-ray releases for Battle of Gods, Resurrection F, and he's got the first two episodes, um, through the Bang Zoom dub, which is not a bad dub. It's... I know, if you're like me, you're probably a Funimation dub purist, and I respect that, but, well, you're either a uh, subs purist, in which case you're weird, and, or a Funimation dub purist. Honestly, depending on the show, I can go either or, like, One Piece, I love both equally, they're really fucking good dubs regardless. Dragon Ball Z, I do prefer English, but the Japanese dubs have been growing on me a little bit, um, I just don't like the... I, I still don't like the horns, honestly, but regardless. <clears throat> actually, newer DBZ stuff has been getting pretty good with that, but anyway. Um, <clears throat> voice, Bob, come on. Oh, I know why. My voice, my throat is full of chocolate. No wonder. That was not a smart decision. So, um, I rewatched this a couple weeks ago, um, Battle of Gods. It, it was actually hilarious, because um, at the time, Taylor, um, my girlfriend, was working on ASU homework and she was on her laptop not watching the movie but I saw she didn't have headphones in and I had the movie at like a decent volume not like breaking windows or anything or shaking the house but um loud enough to be quite audible over headphones I would say <clears throat> so occasionally she'd like chime in on something if she heard something interesting or I point like an observation Message Brandon it, it over Facebook, and I was like, wait, what's up with this? And she was saying, so I knew she was listening. That was actually pretty funny. Um, after that, however, I got really, really sick. I got, damn, I, I I think that was the worst actual stomach poisoning I've had in a long time. Like, or ear stomach or food poisoning. It, it was bad, like, for, like, that Thursday to the following Tuesday, I want to say. Like, all, anything I ate, anything I drank, it would just wash right through me. It was, it was terrible. I was literally living in the bathroom at that point. I, I'm sorry to give those graphic details, but, yeah, that's why I didn't immediately review the movie, because right after I watched it, that shit happened. Literally. <laughs> so, um, as a result, the movie isn't fresh in my mind, but, um, I do, I did retain a lot of the information on why I thought of it. So I figured I'd just go ahead and drop this now before Mulan's Resurrection F and start super properly. <laughs> and pull myself away from a gun him long enough to be able to do it. And One Piece. But anyway. So, the movie itself. I mentioned this um, a couple minutes ago. It's easily like my fourth or fifth favorite movie. Um, when I first watched it, I don't know. Like, my opinion on it kept fluctuating because um, I think... The first thing that was bothering me a lot about the movie when it first came out was it was being very, very blatant about setting up a new Dragon Ball Z series, or just a new Dragon Ball series in general. That irked me a lot, actually. Um, that's why when it was announced, oh my god, new, there's a new series coming out for Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Super, I'm like, are you shocked? Like, no, no, no I'm, I'm, I'm dead serious. Are you actually surprised by this? Because it should not come as a surprise whatsoever from... The hint that was dropped at the tail end of the movie, which was um, Beerus saying how he is one of 12 other um, gods of destruction and other universes. And as soon as he said that, I was like, oh my god, could you be any more obvious with this? This is, it's pretty bad. With, with just dropping that, just like, oh, yep, yep, yep. There's more shit coming after this. I didn't mind, but I mean... Why keep it a secret at that point? Might as well just say after the end of the movie, there's Goku, 
Oh, wait, I think it did say Goku will return or something, but... I don't know. <laughs> I don't think it was quite Marvel movie level at that point. Maybe it was. I don't know. Either way. So, um, I should probably actually move on to my opinions on the movie by itself. Um, it's funny. I just took a shower earlier today and I was actually um, kind of making a mental hit list of things I should talk about in this podcast. And one of the things that came to mind was everyone knows my opinion on like the majority of Dragon Ball Z and some parts of GT. I haven't touched GT in a while on my channel because, well, I haven't. The only games that really touch it is um, Tenkaichi 2 and 3. And I haven't touched those games in fucking years. I will again Tenkaichi 1, but no. Nah. So, uh, it occurred to me. I've never actually given any opinions on the Super Series. Whether it be about new characters going from Battle Gods forward. The new concepts thrown around. Hell, I don't think I've ever actually given an opinion on the Super Saiyan God until that recent uh, Goku countdown I made a few days ago, which was a top 10 things DBZ wants you to forget about Goku. I did drop a good amount of effort into that countdown. I'm pretty ca happy with it, but I can't tell if I'm running out of breath or like my voice is dying. Hmm. <coughs> hey, shit, what is this even? Hang on. Alright. <clears throat> so anyway. Um, things, things, things. Yeah, so, it's just because the, the DBZ games I was covering all just generally go over, like, the general DBZ story arc. And don't, don't really go into, like, anything else crazy. There is one of the stories, but honestly, in terms of, like, actual, um, advanced Dragon Ball storylines and the super arc, I'm not gonna be honestly touching those until fucking Xenoverse. And I won't be playing Xenoverse for probably about five years from now. I am not really exaggerating that. I'm not going to touch Super for fucking ages. Like, or Super, no. Um, Xenoverse. I, I said Xenoverse the first time, right? I don't know. But, um, yeah, so, anyway. Yeah, I've, in general, I've just never gave any opinions on this. So I guess I will now. Starting with, um, I guess I'll just start with the characters themselves, the new ones. Uh... As I said once, Beast and Weirus. I don't remember why I dropped that little, that that little dyslexic fuck up because I do have dyslexia. If I don't, then something's wrong. But no, uh, Beerus and Weiss, T uh, two new characters that kind of set the the uh, ball in motion for this new series going forward. Um, although first of before that, I think I should talk about the concept of gods in Dragon Ball in general. Um. It's weird to think there are actually uh, stations above the Supreme Kai's. I mean, honestly, if we're going back, I thought actual, like, the four Kai's were, like, the top dogs of the galaxies. And then it turns out Supreme Kai ruled over the universe, or, like, at least guided it. And then we find out, oh, wait, there is actually a god of destruction. So I'm like, oh, boy, this is opening up a whole can of worms, isn't it? So, um... I don't really know what the whole god concept is leading to. I'm not sure where it's going. Um, again, I have not watched Shipper Super, so if there's information on this, I don't know. I haven't even touched fucking Z Universe, so I'm raw. Do doing it raw. Mm. My couch pulls out, but I don't. <laughs> anyway. Um, so, what the what exactly the label God of Destruction actually means? Because Beers himself said... For creation, you must have destruction, or at least someone said that. I don't remember if it was Whis or Supreme Kai or someone. I'm pretty sure it was, uh, I want to say it was Beerus. That would probably make the most sense. Um, so exactly what, who, who creates, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, and then we have the Super Saiyan God, which I'm not certain what to think of that. Like, is it a God of Super, is like there one God of Super Saiyans? Why is it that... The, the requirements to reach Super Saiyan God is so mysteriously easy. Like, you just need the heart of six pure-hearted Saiyans. Or was it five? No, I want to say it was six. Five or six. One of those two. Um, I don't remember offhand. So, that that's weird. That It's that easy. But again, Saiyans for the longest time were kind of a bunch of dicks that loved fighting. And 
probably die long before they're able to experience love or joy or anything like that, so... I guess that's understandable, but... Those conditions are... Fucking weird. Like, I don't know, I, I would expect something a lot more elaborate to reach that, but okay. As opposed to joining hands, forming a circle, be, being super stands, and bada bing, bada boom, done. I, I don't know. On top of how Super Saiyan God also mysteriously gives a massive power boost to even just the the base form. That was so weird. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so yeah, the whole God of Destruction label, I've never really quite gotten it. Because that would entail other shit being in there too. Um, I guess this kind of means that uh, fucking Kai's have like... Do Kai's just mean nothing? Do Kai's have no fucking purpose in this series anymore? I, I'm starting to think that might be the case. I don't know, maybe I'm going crazy, but anyway. Um, upon rewatching it, uh, of course when I first saw the, the, the design for Beerus, I was really sketchy. I, or, I, I was a little wishy-washy. I didn't really know what to think of it. It was definitely different. I wasn't sure what to make of a dehydrated or dehydrated bipedal cat being a god and being a major antagonist for Goku. Uh, I'm not sure what to th think about it at the time. Um, honestly, seeing emotion, I, I was mostly mostly put at ease. Um, especially when I put the whole god thing into perspective. I'm like, um, okay, I guess so. Normal for gods, I can understand that, like, normal, traditional, uh, body statures probably don't apply. So, I can respect that. And, honestly, we've seen fucking weirder alien races in Dragon Ball before. Case in point, uh, Vegeta's little run-in with that insectoid planet with the princess and everything in the filler for early Dragon Ball Z. That was fucking weird. And then he blew it up. Lol. Anyway. So. Uh, and w so I was going somewhere with that. So, yeah, design wise, it grew on me. It was not terrible. Um, he animates really well, too. Like, he has some great fucking facial animations. Um, Weez, I'm pretty, I was pretty neutral on. Um, I had no strong opinion, no strong, uh, not opinion <laughs> or something. I, I had no facts, I had no opinions. Okay. But, honestly, I. Actually, watching the movie and seeing the, their personalities, I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> These are actually really fucking cool characters. Um, let me see. Jason Douglas, I think is the name of Beerus' voice actor. He's fucking great. Like, Brandon can rant and rave about how good the Bang Zoom dub is for, for this series. I fucking love Jason Douglas. The dude ha has such a laid-back, good attitude voice about him. It's so good. Um, I guess that's what happens when you voice fucking Aokiji in One Piece, but regardless. Um, Weez's voice actor is also really good. Both their personalities are fucking awesome. Like, I'm not going to get into too much detail. I think both their personalities are... <sighs> most scenes that Beerus was in, he was practically stealing the show. And then most scenes that Weez was in alone, he was stealing the show. Like, they're, they're both such good glowing personalities. Like, I forgot... This is going to sound terrible. Maybe as a jaded Dragon Ball fan, slightly jaded, um, a little bit. It probably doesn't show through most of the time with me. Um, I forgot th this series could make really fucking good characters. Well, you know, besides Vegeta, but like, not good characters, but have glowing personalities and still be a threat, you know? It's actually kind of incredible. So, that was insane. Um... Where do we really go with this? There's no really other new characters that are worth talking about that come to mind immediately. Ugh. Save for that fish thing, but nah, I'm not really going to do that. Alright, so, um, as for the overall plot, the overall pl all plot's not bad. Um, when I first saw it, um, I was expecting a little more action, but... Upon rewatching it, it does have a pretty decent amount of action by itself. It's not bad. It's it follows a, tra a more traditional movie story plot where it's like you have your eight act structure, you have uh, beginning, middle, and end, and you save all the big fighting for the last part. Pretty much, so pretty much like as soon as Beers started fighting all the Z fighters on Earth at Bulma's party, I was like, okay, we're in the final act now. Let's get this shit going. That's 
or maybe you can make an argument for the Super Saiyan God actually appeared. You can make that the last act, but... Mm. Oh yeah, three-act structure. That was what it's called. <laughs> I'm the fucking film major and I forgot that part. That oh, will... Let me get some more powder raid. <sighs> okay, so... Um, what else to talk about? Oh yeah, the story. Um, the, the humor was really good throughout it. Um... There was a really good. S I find that when you're trying to introduce a bre if it's a one movie and you're trying to introduce like a brand new concept and try to flesh it out, um, this movie was definitely a lot longer than a normal Dragon Ball Z movie, so they definitely had a lot more time to like flesh out the whole god destruction thing, um, really explore like the mythos between or the mythos for what the Super Saiyan God actually was, really give it time to actually grow with the audience, and I was like, yeah, yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, I think they were kind of dancing around some points, like, a little too much, like, as to finding out what a Super Saiyan God is and how it happens. I think if Beerus wanted to fight the Super Saiyan God, I think he should have been, like, giving a little more direct input. I mean, I'm just saying, if you want to fight someone that badly, someone that strong, then you, you could be a little more forward about it. As a result, I think he was kind of dancing around the point a little too much, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. God damn it. Who is messaging me? Yeah, whatever. Um, what else to talk about? Uh, score is great. Score. The score has officially dropped the fucking really bad tinny brass instruments from yesteryear and has actually gone full on orchestra and it sounds bloody gorgeous. Bloody gorgeous. Yeah, sure. Let's go with that, Bob. Why not? Um, it, it's just, it's really good. Um, for me, if it's not, um, God, can I remember the dude's name? Not Brian Johnson. The dude who did the orchestra f or, like, the really good soundtracks for, uh, Fugitive Born and Bruce Falconer. I don't think I have to explain who Bruce Falconer really is. If it wasn't those guys making Dragon Ball Z scores, I was kind of iffy. Especially the dude who did the really terrible scores for both, uh, cool, uh, Return of Cooler and GT. Like, fucking Snorefest of soundtracks, my God. Especially in the Broly movie, like, if you go and rewatch the Broly movie, if it's not a licensed song, the score is terrible. Like, holy fuck, it is bad. But whoever the guys did that for the uh, orchestra sections for Battle of Gods, good shit, dude. Like, or good shit, guys. I, like, mm. 12 thumbs up, if that's even possible. <laughs> okay. Um. <sighs> Excuse me. Yeah, I think my throat's getting a little... Messed up for some reason. Ooh. Should have got some water instead, but alright. Um Yeah, characters pretty solid. Um story setup. I guess I can't really bullshit and say that the story is great throughout. There is a lot of slow sections, like um especially with peel off. Like I know they were trying to establish some good character growth for trunks and everything, which I'm not sure why. If if this is important later, then cool. I mean, they do do the whole. I I know the whole, some of the things that happen with Black Goku and everything, and like the future, which is weird. But I I know some of the events. Um. So it wasn't bad. Um, but I think we could have sped up a few parts, like uh, pretending that I don't know her name. I literally completely forgot. Uh, fuck. Well, I have the wiki open right here, so I can just look, I suppose. Why not? Uh, do, 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 do. My, that was it. Uh, the, the parts with my pretending to be Trunks' girlfriend. I think a little of that, that could be cut down. A little bit of the, little of the show is going to be cut down a little bit also. Then again, I was watching the extended cut, so it was the original movie in its entirety, not the theatrical release. So, well, I did watch the theatrical release when it first came out, obviously, but... The Blu-ray run I recently watched ha was extended, so I watched all of it. Um, again, I think there was a lot of plot points you could have just... Well, not plot points, but a lot of dead time you could have cut out and it would have been fine. But that's more towards the middle. The, the beginning is fine. The middle is just like... feels a little bloated, you know? But, yeah. Regardless. Um, is there any other major things I should, I should talk about? Um, I think they kind of... Well... First of all, I... Pff, fucking... 
Okay, okay, yeah. I should talk about that. <laughs> My favorite character in the, in the entire series and across a lot of anime in general, Vegeta. Uh, man, he he was thrown into some weird spotlights in this movie. Um, actually showing legitimate fear of just someone's presence alone that isn't Broly and isn't a dumb setup. Like, I I can understand that the whole God of Destruction thing does ha carry a lot of weight if you're in the know. Um... Although how King Vegeta knew about the God of Destruction in advance, I don't know. It seems like gods should, don't reveal themselves like at all, and their existence is still kind of like a myth. So, if they even if there's even myths about it at all, so how King Vegeta had knowledge of that in advance, I'm not entirely certain. Who can say? Uh, whatever. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this movie did some interesting things to him. The, of course, the three things are um, quick and fear of viewers. Of course, the whole dance scene. Which got me a bitch if we will, but I still fast forward to that just because I'm like, not out of denial, but I'm just like, I don't know. It, it just, something about it is just too cringeworthy for me to actually sit through. I've watched a little, a couple clips of it before, but I'm like, uh, uh, let's, it, it's also my slight stigmata against music, like music numbers in general and like movies or TV shows or anything really. I, I don't do musicals, like, at all. It's hard to get me to sit down th through one. Uh, and, of course, the whole, You hit my Bulma! That that whole bit with B Bulma getting slapped. And I'm like, you know... At first, I was very on the fence about it, but then later on, once I'm like, yeah, at this point, four years after the whole Boo fight, I can imagine Vegeta would actually be fairly protective of Bulma at this point. I mean, he he was kind of set up at... Um, he was kind of taken aback when Goku dropped the bombshell that Boo ate Bulma. So, yeah, I could see this being a thing at this point in the series. And, and him actually being very protective of her. Just, just saying, but yeah. Alright, so I'm quickly running out of plot points to cover. Or, like, major bullet points I should go over. Is there anything big I'm dancing around? Um, I think Goku super... Oh, yeah, um... Some of the war effects and a lot of the effects across the board were all right. Um, sometimes it didn't feel like it was quite movie budget quality, especially like the war effect for Super Saiyan God itself. That felt a little weird. Oh yeah, I should, I should talk about that. The, my opinion on Super Saiyan God in general. Um, I've expressed my opinion on it in that counting video again. I It took a while to grow on me. At first I was like, this is it. I, I'm sure there's a few other people's reactions too, but over time, it actually grew up me quite a bit. Um, mainly because it is such a huge departure from normal Dragon Ball Z like standards with new form equals crazier hair, bigger, bigger muscles, or something crazy in terms of physical design. Like, um, God, the fucking sheer number of... Uh, God damn it. Of uh, th YouTube thumbnails speculating what it'll look like and of course the one that is basically just like Super Saiyan 4 but it's gold I'm just like okay no let's let, let's please not do that no that's just bad um but w once it actually got there um into the story I'm like oh okay this is actually not that bad this is really cool so yeah no Super Saiyan God form the, the sheer concept, like, once you actually get into, like, the, the nitty-gritty of it, like, how it's a, um, because it's supposed to represent, like, actual god energy, and god energy is not something we've ever seen. We've never seen gods before. I'm not sure if he qualified like Kai's at this point. Yeah. And we've never, like, seen it actually put on, like, a fire build. So to actually see it in motion and to see it used in this way, I thought it was really clever. I think gods kind of need to be defined a little bit more in the, at this part of the show, but yeah, for the most part, considering like it's supposed to be like a new sleeker build, I thought it was really cool. Um, I wasn't expecting there to be further transformations beyond this, namely just a recolor of fucking Super Saiyan. Mm. That was yeah, but anyway, um, yeah, the, the sleeker build uh, definitely helped uh, offset or. Build the impression that it was a lot more built around uh, actual key usage, namely God Key, which, of course, 
bellied a lot of energy about it, so that was really cool. Um, how Goku got a power boost big enough just to his base form to the, to the point that regular Super Saiyan was able to compete with Beerus at 70% power. How that happened is still beyond me, really. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. Um, so, so it's just like, well, what's the point of Super Saiyan God again, really? If even just reaching the power is able to make you go into it, I'm just like, okay, sure. I don't know. And of course, the whole um, power ran out. Of su okay, yeah, that's the one more point I want to bring up. Uh, the whole power running out for Super Saiyan God, and then like you can't access it again. But it powered up your base form enough that it doesn't really. It's like almost as powerful. I'm like, wait. So Goku's able to transform to Super Saiyan God freely in the next movie, but in this movie, like he, the time limit runs out and he can't transform into again on a whim. But in the next movie, he can. What? What? What is going on here? Again, that is really more an indicator of the sheer amount of gap that's actually between the first and second movie, and how Resurrection F felt more like it was kind of just unimportant. It was just kind of just like there, but it's so a good movie. So, eh. I don't know. Take it before you will. I think at some point I actually have to construct like a top ten list of my actual favorite Dragon Ball Z movies. I should go over to work on that, but that won't be for a little bit. But regardless, um, so yeah, overall this movie was um. It still kept a lot of the normal tropes of Dragon Ball Z. Um, I say Dragon Ball Z because I'm looking at the logo right here, and it does have Z at the end of it. It's not super yet. So, yeah, no, it's definitely good. The story is serviceable throughout. Um, it manages to cram a decent arc that you would normally get in, like, maybe eight episodes in Dragon Ball Z into, like, an hour and a half. So it's not terrible. Um, it could have focused on different plot points a little bit more, but I still think it was kind of decent. Yeah, I'm, I have, I have no real immediate objections. It still need, I think it needs a little fine tuning in some areas, like uh, battle effects and some of that stuff. But no, it's, it's good. At this point, when this movie was released, I had confidence that it was going to go in a good direction for the entire series of franchise as a whole. So. <clears throat> Yeah, no, I, I wasn't um, going to complain too much about it. Alright, so, um, I guess it's time to go actually watch Resurrection F again, because I haven't watched it since it first came out. So, yeah, that'll be interesting. Um, but yeah, no, if you haven't watched Battle of Gods, I should think it might be a good enough entry by itself, just for like any casual fans of DBZ to actually get back into the franchise. Oh wait, no, there is one more thing I want to talk about, about uh, Battle of Gods. The new art style, the new, new art style is okay for, is actually great for new characters. Because it's built around them and it, it, it seems natural, but Goku seems like he's kind of just like a, a, a walking rectangle at some points. Um, I'll see if I can flash an image of what I mean by that on the screen right now. It's, I don't know, his build has always been a little bit weird in this. Maybe just me. I don't know. It, a lot of the muscle proportions and like the clothing just seems like it, it seems like some of the characters are made of Legos at some point. I'm not certain what's going on with that. Oh yeah, and also Vegeta's in his regular Saiyan armor again. That's kind of odd, since you know at, at throughout the course of the show he was losing clothing. Now all of a sudden he's gone back to, back to the Cell Saga armor. Uh, I imagine that's probably more for marketing, but I'm not entirely certain. Anyway, yeah, that's time to go, for me to go watch fucking Resurrection F now. But I'm gonna do a quick workout first, but. Regardless, I hope you guys have a good day. I'll be back with the next podcast, hopefully in a reasonable amount of time. And then we will start the actual Dragon Ball Z Super Show. Dragon Ball Z Super Show. No, God, that sounds like fucking the Super Mario Super Show or something. No, um, Dragon Ball Super will hopefully be starting soon. I know it's basically a retelling of the first two movies, but I like, I don't mind. I mean, I've expressed interest before and in actually... Watching both the Bang Zoom dub and the Funimation dub for the show, so I don't care, but I don't know. Considering I'm doing a podcast review series for the show now, that'll be interesting, but yeah. Peace.